All right, YouTube, so this is gonna be a little walk around video of my 2007 GSXR 600. I am the third owner of this 2007 GSXR. Uh, I purchased it about seven months ago, I think, and it currently has currently has a uh, key that doesn't want to turn. There you go. Currently has 26,352 miles on it, um, and it does have a check engine light on, which I'll explain more in a second. All right, so when I bought the bike, the bike already had the smoked screen right here. Um, the standard that you buy from factory comes with a clear screen. This is a Puig, P-U-I-G, maybe, maybe it's an acronym, I don't know. P-U-I-G racing screen. Um, I'm not sure if it's any bigger than the original, but that's different. Um, Red rim tape, okay? I bought the bike without red rim tape. I got this on Amazon, I think. It was, uh, not even sure how much it was. It was probably like $20, $20 for red rim tape. It's reflective tape, and I think it kind of uh, helps accentuate the red logo and then the red tires and kind of brings everything together. We'll continue with aesthetics, because that's where we're going, I guess. Back here, uh, there was obviously a tail tidy done. I think the, the first owner probably did this because uh, normally the normally the license plate hangs out to about here. Um, so someone took this and they made it carbon fiber. I don't know if that's real carbon fiber. I kind of doubt it, but eh. Um, someone smoked these, the uh, turn signals. So it has smoke turn signals. Uh, you can still see them, obviously, if I turn the bike on. They're still pretty bright, but they are smoked, so they're a little bit more, uh, they blend in with this more. So now let's talk about crash protection. Um, there are, I think it comes standard with the bar end bumpers. See right here, bar ends. Then down here we have the frame sliders. And then we have the other set of frame sliders back here, the tail frame sliders. Um, I bought it like that. These are actually drilled through the uh, drilled through the uh, fairing. Unfortunately, the fairing got cracked when they drilled it, <laughs> but you can't really tell. Could have been when I dropped it, actually. Who knows? This is from the drop, actually. This bar end. I need to buy a new bar end because the uh, this end has it. But this end obviously does not have it because it it broke off when I dropped the bike um, in Palo Verde <laughs> in the famous uh, dropping of the motorcycle video. I think that's all there is as far as crash protection goes. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is electronics, which I did a lot more to the electronics portion. So um, I added a RAM mount here too. This is a phone mount that's adjustable by RAM. Uh, a lot of motovloggers have these. It's really useful for going places you haven't been to before and using your GPS. I used it, I use it a lot to get places. Um, one of the things you might not notice on first glance is that I have some instrumentation added down here. Now, what could that possibly be? Let's get a zoom in right there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So. What do we have here? We have a red switch. What does that do? Flip the switch. And you have, that is the voltage of my battery. 12.6 volts. Oh, what's that say? USB. There is a 1.0 amp and a 2.1 amp uh, USB charger right there built into the bike. I added that pretty recently. And that was in preparation for going on my trip, which has already passed. Okay, so I have the power turned on and I have it plugged in. You can follow the wire. Whoa. 
if you follow the wire, it goes here and it plugs into the back of the GoPro. It's a 30 pin cable you can buy it on Amazon. And uh, I forget how much it is, I think it's like 30 bucks. But it basically charges your GoPro and lets you run without a, uh, without a battery pretty much. You could take the battery out of this or you could put a battery in there and if it dies or if this, if your bike turns off, you can continue running with the onboard battery. If you're curious about the electronics, I'm gonna do a separate video on how to wire everything because if you uh, look right here, I have my wires coming through here. They go underneath the gas tank and into the uh, battery. Another thing I wanna show you, I didn't stop there. There's another switch down here and if you point it back, it turns on something back here. And actually in the trunk, there's a cigarette lighter, um, which if you've seen those die hard things, what are they called? Die hard uh, power converters. It's basically like you plug in, you can plug in a, it'll convert a car 12 volt to 120 volts or 110 volts, 110 volts. Uh, so you can basically charge your laptop or other devices that require a three prong. Uh, I'll show you that. Let me take out the trunk. So I basically plugged in an adapter into here and then plugged in the die hard over here and then I was able to charge my uh, laptop while I was riding. You probably noticed that I have my check engine light on and the reason why is because someone removed the catalytic converter from this bike. Normally there's a huge catalytic converter down here on the 07 models and then the exhaust comes out to like right here and just sticks out. Um, Someone removed the catalytic converter, if you look down there, and they just put a mid-pipe. Um, right here, there's a, a little connection right there, that little spring. That spring connects to a servo. On my bike, the butterfly valve is locked open, um, so it's like, there's the exhaust. The butterfly valve is flat, um, straight open all the time, because they actually disconnected the cables. Um, there's actually cables that run down, if you look right here. Uh, these cables are basically like brake cables almost, and they run up to the very tail, and they control that butterfly valve. Now that butterfly valve will open and close, um, depending on RPMs and things like that. And from what, I'm, from what I've heard, the whole reason of having that butterfly valve is for regulations, like noise regulations, because the bike gets loud at certain RPMs. I'm not exactly sure why they have it, but regardless, the, the original owner, who bought this bike, decatted the bike, got rid of the catalytic converter, added a mid-pipe, added this MotoGP growler exhaust. I think that's what it's called. Uh, it is carbon fiber. I think that's real carbon fiber. Uh, but, and I kinda like the gold because it actually matches the, uh, the same color as the uh, forks. So, I kinda do like it. The issue is that now my bike doesn't realize that the butterfly valve is open or closed because it doesn't have any communication. So basically, the engine is communicating by computer to the servo, which is basically a motor, and that motor is connected down here. But the thing is he disconnected it, so now the motor can't control the butterfly valve. So the engine might be telling the servo to close the butterfly valve, but it has no way of doing so because the cables are disconnected if that makes any sense. The exhaust is always locked open and the computer doesn't know that. So I don't know if the computer is firing correctly. It might be cutting fuel or it might be leaning things out or it might be messing with the fuel air mixture. I have no idea. So um, it's good practice to, when you change an exhaust, to add a power converter, which you put the power converter in your trunk and the power converter communicates with your computer of the bike and it be, uh, you wanna get it dyno tuned, which means you take your bike, take your bike to a shop, and you get, see I'm, I'm explaining dyno tuning right now, <laughs> but it's important, because a lot of people don't talk about it when they change the exhausts. So, it's good, good practice to, when you get a new exhaust, you take your bike to a shop, and you have them dyno tune it, and you have them program your power commander, did I say power converter or power commander? It's power commander. Power commander in your trunk, to communicate with your engine and tell it how much fuel to put in uh, according to the new exhaust. Um, 
neither the first nor second owner did that. So that's why I have a check engine light on because the bike is detecting zero back pressure um, and it doesn't know how to account for the fuel. So when I have enough money, I'm gonna buy a power converter and I'm going to get it dyno tuned and get everything adjusted properly because I think that might be why sometimes the bike lurches, not lurches, but like sometimes the, uh, sometimes I'll hold the throttle steady and the bike will kind of uh, rumble or lurch. It's almost like it's engine braking when I'm not actually closing the throttle, which means the bike, the computer is cutting fuel somewhere um, because it probably thinks the exhaust is, is closed or something like that. The biggest thing is you probably want to hear the exhaust, which I'll do that right now. Thing I almost forgot about were the tires. Um, these are Michelin Pilot Road 4s. Michelin Pilot Road 4s. Uh, the previous owner had, I don't even remember what type they were, but I ended up going with Michelin Pilot Road 4s because I heard good things about them and in wet weather conditions and that they held up good uh, as far as the longevity. I was almost going to go with the Pilots, Michelin Pilot Road, or not Road, Michelin Pilot Power 3s, I think that's what they're called. But I figured I'm going to do more commuting than I am going to do canyon riding. So I don't want my tires to go out after like 2,000 miles. I think these will go like 6,000, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, <laughs> and there's my chicken strips, of course. You can see the... I, I, I don't get low enough. I don't, I don't get any... I need to go to the mountains and practice, but I don't get I don't get low enough. Let's check the front. <laughs> oh, the front's not too great either. Uh, oh god, uh, that's terrible. You, 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 see, you can actually get out to here. You can actually get out to that little bit, but then you're only riding on like that much that much surface. Um, is this side redeemable? I think this side might actually be worse. For some reason, uh, I've heard people say that their tires wear more on the left-hand turn than the right-hand turn. And I think that's because people tend to slow down for the right-hand turns, so they're not turning with as much lean angle. But, I don't know. That might not be true. <laughs> uh, the chicken strips. We'll, we'll end with the chicken strips. We'll end with the chicken strips. And uh, hopefully, eventually that'll look a little bit more like the rest. A little more worn down. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. If you have questions, let me know and I'll try to get back to you about specifics. I think that's it. There's my bike. There's my the beast. I love it.